What's up guys? It's been a while since I've done one of these. So I have a standard deck. It is kind of budget. Um, it's budget because of what it is, but with what it has in it, it's not. So we'll go right into it. We will start off with the creatures. We're running eight creatures in this, um, and I'll tell you how, to, how I sideboard and stuff. Um, we're running four Cerulean Gatekeepers, uh, two four for three and a green. When it enters the battlefield, if you control two or more gates, you gain seven life. Um, it'll most of the time come out against your uh, control matchups, um, and I'll get to the sideboard later. But it, it'll most of the time come out against it. Like most of this, like the meta game right now, is almost nothing but control. So that's why this is in here. Um, we're also running four gate creeper vine. A 0 2 for 1 and a green. Defender enters the battlefield. Search your library for a basic land or a gate. Reveal it, put it into your hand, and then shuffle your library. Very good in this deck. It kind of goes along with the whole mazes in thing. So there's that. And I'll go on ahead and tell you the land. Whatever. Alright, I'll go ahead and tell you the, the land base of it. And that is four mazes end which enters the battlefield tap tap add one to your mana pool pay three tap return it to its owner's hand search your library for a gate card put it onto the battlefield then shuffle your library if you control ten or more gates with different names you win the game so there there's a weird ruling question about this in real life um, somebody was telling me about the last star city dude had he had ten gates out the turn before but apparently you don't have to have out Maze's End to win, which makes no sense to me. But just if y'all are confused about that, ask a judge, uh, Star City judge, whoever, call wizards, whatnot. So there's that. And then we're running two of each guild gate. You kind of know, you understand that. So I'm not going to go through the names or nothing. All right, then going on to sorceries. We're running four Supreme Verdict. One, two white and a blue. Can't be countered. Destroy all creatures. Very good in a fog deck. Uh, I kind of wish we still had Terminus because of this deck, but it happens. And we're also running two urban evolution. Three, a green and a blue. Sorcery, draw three cards. You may play an additional land this turn. Very good card. Um, so, I mean, like, who doesn't want to play an extra land? I mean, I do. And running on to the instance, here's all our fog effects. We are running three Aetherize, three in a blue instant, return all attacking creatures to their owner's hand. Very good card in this, especially because of how much aggro there is um, in the meta. Um, and then we're running four Defend the Hearth, one in a green, prevent all combat damage that will be dealt to players this turn. Uh, just a fog, pretty much, without with one more cost so that's just about it uh, we're also running four druids deliverance one in a green prevent all combat damage will be dealt to you this turn and then populate you're not running off the populate engine unless you have your planeswalker out and that's about it we're also running four fog a green instant prevent all combat damage will be dealt this turn so there, there's the fog mechanic right there and then Four riot control, two and a white. You gain one life for each creature your opponents control. Prevent all con all damage that would be dealt to you this turn. Um, very good card. I mean, it helps you life gain, all that good stuff. But side note, this is the only card that will work against burn. If they sat there and boros charm you for four, fog does not work. It will not prevent that damage because it is not combat damage. It is direct. Whereas this prevent all damage that would be dealt to you this turn. Keep that in mind if you're playing against that new uh, th Boros three color burn or whatnot. Uh, we're also running two into the wilds, three in a green enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, look at the top card of your library. If it's a land card, you may put it onto the battlefield. Uh, just pretty much a way to speed up the whole situation. Um, so there's that. And then we are running one Elspeth Sons Champion, four and two white, and Planeswalker, 
starts at four loyalty, plus one, put three one one white soldier creature tokens onto the battlefield, minus three, destroy all creatures with power four or greater, minus seven, you get an emblem with creatures you control and get plus two plus two and have flying. Very good card. I would be running Kioras in here, but they are like thirty dollars on MTGO whenever I built this and I'm like I'm not paying that much for a Kiora. Uh, she's extremely good in this. I would actually put her over into the wilds. Um, so there's that if you want to want to mess with that a little bit. Um, now moving on to the sideboard, we're running two Elixir of Immortality, one Casting Cost Artifact, two Tap, you gain five life, shuffle Elixir of Immortality and your graveyard into their owner's library. This does not hit the graveyard, so they cannot do anything about that because this will all, always be put in. Um, we're also running three Dreadbore, a black and a red, sorcery, destroy target creature, or planeswalker. The planeswalker part is the biggest part with this deck, um, or with this card, rather. Um, I would run Heroes Downfall, but I'm iffy on the double black. I mean, it shouldn't seem hard to hit it, but I mean, with running five colors, and it kind of it's iffy so I'm running three dread boars honestly I'd up it but kind of happens we're also running one wear and tear uh, wear one in a red instant destroy target artifact or tear one white destroy target enchantment or you can pay one red and a white to cast both of them at the same time so there's that it's pretty much against pithing needles and just stuff like that um, we're also running two Crackling Perimeter, one in a red enchantment, tap an untap gate you control, uh, Crackling Perimeter deals one damage to each opponent. It's in there for an alternate win if you just need, like, against control, just to kind of get in there. Uh, most of the time, I'll put those in over the end of the wilds. I'm also running two Raw Zeric, two a blue and a red, uh, Planeswalker, four loyalty, plus one, tap target permanent, then untap another target permanent. Uh, minus two, Rosaric deals three damage to target your creature or player. And minus seven, flip five coins, take an extra turn after this one for each coin that comes up heads. Very good control card in here. The, the tapping and just being able to uh, bolt something is, is really good. Um, I'm also running three Pithing Needle. If y'all have watched my deck text before, I have Pithing Needle in almost everything I run. Um, one casting cost artifact. Er Whenever it enters the battlefield, name a card. Uh, activated abilities of sources with chosen name can't be activated unless they're mana abilities. So, death, say you name Deathrite Shaman, it can still exile a card, exile land, and make a mana, but it wouldn't be able to use like its uh, its black one or its green one to gain life. Um, so there's that. And we're also running two detention spheres, one a white and a blue enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, you may exile target non-land permanent, not named detention sphere, and all other permanents with the same name as that permanent. When it leaves the battlefield, return the exiled cards to the battlefield under their owner's control. That'll come in mostly against control, uh, and like sometimes aggro, depending on what it is. Uh, if it's red green monsters, this is coming in. Pithing needles are coming in and naming like the Xenagos guide or Domery or Xenagos itself and just stuff like that. So let's let's play a quick game with this. Um if we if we can do it. Hopefully I don't have uh somebody just quit on me. Um and we'll go best two out of three and see see if it runs. So But hopefully y'all y'all will enjoy this deck. It's kind of budget, but because of the Elspeth, it's not. And same thing with Raw Zeric. And that is really loud in my ear. So, yeah. Um, I, I don't think we mulligan. No, I wouldn't like to mulligan. Oh, dear God. That is very loud in my ear. And I can't turn the volume now. Awesome. So I'm sorry if it's really loud for y'all. Um. So. 
We're going to play our guild gate and just kind of get in there and, and just kind of set everything up. But yeah, like, I, we were playing against Naya, apparently. Um, we're going to and get the Gruel Gilgate out there. And then next turn, we'll start playing the Maze's End. Okay. I hadn't seen this version of this. So, go ahead and play our mazes end. You see, this is where fog is just not needed. So. And I have a feeling he's just gonna like end up winning this. Go on and play that and we'll play our gate gatekeepers that way we can kinda stay alive a little bit. Um this might end up being a very bad matchup for us. I think it's gonna be but he does have two cards in hand so we might be able to do something I hate playing against burn so much yay fire dancer We'll play that and just, I don't know. We'll go ahead and play our big thing. Cause all he's gonna do is he's gonna burn us and then that's gonna trigger and then burn us for two. So this might actually suck for us. Three. Okay, you got a Reckoner, that's completely fine. Okay, let's see if we hit a land. Okay. We got one of those, so I think... I think we're gonna... We're gonna urban. Let's play our Gilgate. Play our Gilgate. We got six out right now. I will definitely take three. Which I should have blocked that because it would have been two instead of three. And then, yeah. Well, play mistakes. So we're probably losing this one anyway. Yeah, I'm just gonna concede it before he can even play anything. Alright, so we got gatekeepers there. So I think what we'll do is we'll fight fire with fire. Um we're gonna take out the end of the wilds. We're gonna take out that. And we're gonna put in two raw Zerics. Um Defend the Hearth ain't gonna do anything. So, and we'll we'll do it this way. 
try and uh, try and survive this a little bit. That don't seem good. But I'm not gonna mulligan it. The only reason is we got the verdict, we got the riot control in our hand. So hopefully everything will go okay with this. We just gotta hit that one more land. And we are running 24. Hopefully we hit a green. Thought sees me, buddy. He's gonna take the verdict or the dread boar. That's what it's gonna be. Is the verdict or the dread boar. Oh, he's gonna take the right control. Obviously he knows. We did hit a rack dust guild gate, so it'll be okay. Hopefully. We we're set up for the dread board. fine still get shuffle and we hit a guild gate awesome not the one we needed I shouldn't I should have mulliganed this hand and tried to get a green one okay play your reckoner sir Okay. And another great creeper vine. Awesome. Good news is we do have enough for a verdict. And another gate creeper. Hopefully we hit a guild gate. Does he have it? Come on. Lightning strike and shot. That see that's the only really bad matchup you'll have is that um and Letting y'all know the burn is big on MTGO right now, obviously, because who doesn't want to play cheap shit? I mean, I do. But anyway, so hopefully y'all enjoyed this deck tech. And if y'all have any questions, whatnot, hit me up. And we'll catch y'all in the next one.